Welcome to the Photography TV studio where joining me on the high seat here is Art Wolf. Art, a pleasure to meet you. Uh, we've been keeping you busy for the last couple of days here, haven't we? That you have. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I gave a talk about Earth is my witness yesterday and yeah. now I've just completed a, a, a talk on the human canvas, which I'm also you know, very proud of that work. And in terms of chronology here, I mean, you've been a conservational photographer since before conservational photography was a thing. Um, and a lot of your work kind of went down that line and taught, told some amazing stories of the planet Earth and bits of it that are in peril, but also its beauty as well. But fast forward to today, where we're talking about, you were talking about the human canvas. That stands apart, or does it, from some of the work that you've done before in terms of the theatricality of it? You know, I love challenging myself. And so I'm always looking for something that I've not done in the past. Mm -hmm. And the human canvas really was born out of my exposure to indigenous cultures yeah. around the world and specifically how they adorn themselves during ceremonial occasions. Mm -hmm. So I drew from that knowledge to find a way of talking about the human form but not to be cliche and not to look and resemble something that's already happened by other fine photographers. So I drew from the adornment of African tribes and mm -hmm. South American nations and all those things came out of my memory of those places and my experiences. And I just combined a modern artist uh, ideas with existing traditional culture. Yeah, and in terms of your materials, obviously the human body is your canvas there, but you're layering on all kinds of other stuff on there, whether it's uh, paint, clay, for example. There's a whole art artistic journey before you've even clicked any shutter button on a camera. In fact, that's really to the point. I think it's the creation of a concept, the storyboarding and drawing in smaller scale, what I was going to be doing later mm -hmm. on a much larger scale. Because honestly, if you have as many uh, models as I did at one time, like yeah. 30, you can't have them standing around naked and cold wondering what we're doing next. I always had to have the next idea really in my mind and just punch the, uh, the yeah. dot and go for it. And so I often during those shoots would do 10 to 12 different yeah. original designs, but it was all laid out in my mind and even to the point where the backdrops were one on top of the other. So literally right, oh, wow. you'd work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And at the end of the day, my God, you're so mentally exhausted and physically drained. But it's the kind of draining that is so good mm. because you know you have created something really original. Let's go way, way, way back in time because I understand that you were, you, you trained as a fine artist as my well. My background's actually fine art painting yeah. and art education. So seven years of college, uh, I can spot, speak very eloquently about all the different art movements from early man to the modern expressionism. Mm -hmm. And that has informed the way I see and the way I work. Even though my bailiwick has traditionally been traditional culture or wildlife or native landscapes, I've always tried to utilize the elements of design and the artistic design, whatever the subject was. Mm. So what are you allowed to tell us about what's next? I mean, you travel extensively, many months of the year. Um, we were just chatting before the cameras rolled about where you're off to next. Anything you're allowed to tease us with about the project? Ah, there's the nothing I cannot spin? talk about. <laughs> you know, I'm not that private. Uh, I've got a book uh, coming out next year on elephants. It's a, it's a cry in the dark uh, because we're losing so many elephants yeah. to poaching right now. And so I, you know, the body of work that I've created about that is just one brick in a wall that's got to be constructed to yeah. save these great creatures on our planet. I'm doing a book on faith uh, that looks at what people believe in. So all the big religions on the planet, but mm -hmm. also voodoo and shamanism ah. will give it layers and textures that will give a lot of depth to the project. I'm doing a book called Wild, which looks at uh, the Earth's great creatures. Um, there's a book called Photography as Art, which is looking at degraded areas, big uh, abandoned areas of major cities, but finding art in it. And that really plays to my background as an artist. So there's a lot of these uh, book projects that are kind of lined up like planes ready to take off. Well, completely. And I was just looking at your body of work. You are a prolific artist in many ways with, well, by the sounds of it, 
three, I, th three books a year. You've got so many plates that you're spinning at once right now. It, it all makes sense now you talk about all of these books, these projects that you're still working on that will be coming out in the next year or two. I have this constant fear of something akin to writer's block where mm -hmm. you have no ideas, no inspiration, there's no reason to get out of bed. And so I intentionally fill my days with ideas and I'm driven that way. And so if I was only photographing for stock or something that I would make money from, it would hardly be the motivation to get out of bed. But when yeah. I've got a book project, there's reason. And I love that fact. Well, listen, Art, I'm so grateful that you've been able to join us in the studio. Uh, everyone who's seen you on the super stage as well, grateful you've been here for the last couple of days. Good luck with all of those projects. Thank you for having me. It's great talking to you.